Hi, my name's Adrian and I'm the CEO of Remax of Southern Africa. Welcome to Time Out with Remax. You know, the human mind works just like a fertile land. Whatever you plant, it'll return in abundance, whether you plant weeds or whether you plant crops. The human mind works exactly the same way. Whether you're putting negative thoughts in or positive thoughts, it'll return in abundance whatever you fertilize it with. Well, today we're going to hear from Mark Keating on some ideas that we should be using to fertilize our mind positively. I hope you enjoy today's session. Hi, Adrian, and uh, thank you so much for that very kind and warm introduction. And also, you know, a huge shout out to your team and assisting and getting me involved in this. Really appreciate it. And a big welcome to everyone watching this. Um, for those that I haven't met before, I spoke to quite a few of you up at Sun City recently. And it was just the other day we were there for an amazing event, full throttle, and um, how much things have changed. So if I address the elephant in the room right up, COVID-19, coronavirus, the pandemic, go back five, six, seven weeks ago, things were dramatically different for so many of us personally in our businesses, our strategies going forward. My business, like many of yours, had been experiencing the last three years were the best years in the last 14 years. And we certainly had a massive start to 2020, and my understanding is so did Remax. And things have changed. Um, you know, I don't have a crystal ball. I can't predict what the future is. And you would have heard some Piwe and some of Douglas Kruger and your other great speakers talk around focusing on what's within our control. And I really want to use this opportunity to share some ideas with you that I've certainly been looking at personally. And it's not just Mark, CEO of Sales Guru, and albeit that I'm consulting for a fair amount of companies at the moment, um, my business, like many of yours, has a dramatic shift in the last several weeks. We were fully booked for the next four months. I know many of you had your pipelines full and fairly full and were pushing through deals. And, uh, you know, we're having to readjust with whatever we can to get through this. And the unknown is really is this 30, 60, 90, 120, three months, six months. I think for many of us, it's a scary unknown that's also weighing a little bit on our minds. So I want to share some ideas with you. And um, if I look back in the last three to four weeks, the effect that this has had is across multiple industries. The level of effect has been very much so according to the type of industry and a massive component according to what is it that that individual, that team, that company, that brand, that industry provides, because your priority is what they were five, six, seven weeks ago. Your customers' priorities five, six, seven weeks ago, their customers' priorities pre-COVID have certainly changed to a very large degree as to where we stand here right now. I think I, I just want to give you a little caveat that if you hear me coughing a bit, I'm getting over a bit of a bronchial uh, infection. It's not COVID-19. You can't get it through the screen so everyone can relax. But uh, what's changed? Well, certainly from an element of going into lockdown, something I've never experienced. I don't believe pretty much anyone watching this has experienced unless you've been to jail. And um, having to work from home and try and readjust and trying to you know, juggle 10 balls and work out what is the one we can't drop to ready or the most important thing to drive us forward um, has been a challenge for all of us. As I mentioned, for many industries, sales have dried up. It's become a sales drought. In fact, I'd even go as far to say it's, it's become a bit of a sales virus, not the coronavirus, which has in turn impacted greatly on the economy. And if I look at a lot of clients, the sales pipelines, what they were several weeks ago to now, are completely different. If I look at the number of new meetings, engagements that have been occurring, have also dried up to a large degree, albeit that I'm seeing it still happening across certain sectors. The one thing, though, that has had a big impact on the meetings or what people are doing and what I'm seeing across broad sales right now are the ones that are still using this time to prospect and or market themselves and their businesses in the right professional, empathetic way that allows them to strengthen their network as well as open up potential doors. But the messaging and the way in which we do this is a crucial element. 
And, you know, I wanted to lay right at the start here that something I've preached for the last 25, 26 years and certainly in the last 15 almost now at Sales Group is that sales is the lifeblood of the economy. Sales is the most important element of every single business. And I'm not detracting from every other part that is a fantastic support function to us acquiring new customers and where possible retaining the customer because a customer is a sale and the customer is income and income is cash flow. And, and that's vital. And really, I think here is to say what you all do really, really, really matters. And I've also been speaking quite a bit recently as to how I believe that salespeople out there in the market, outside of the healthcare workers, essential services, which we're all very blessed to have these people doing this, but the salespeople are the warriors of the businesses and of the brands. And we might not see it, but so many others are looking to us to actually lead from the front and start to drive the revenue because one rand filters through several hundreds, if not thousands of hands as it passes through the economy. And if I look from a sales perspective, you know, pre-COVID strategies, um, every business, small team, large team, we all had our strategies, sales strategies, business strategies, and those to a large degree have been thrown out of the window. But the fundamentals of what we do from a sales perspective remains the same. And that's really to offer something that people want, need, that they see is urgent and a priority at a cost, inverted commas, that is far less than the value that they're going to get from this. And, you know, I don't believe that that need has changed. Maybe the level of need has changed according to marketplace. But let's talk property or real estate. I think that without being an expert or claiming to be an expert there, I believe that the market will shrink to a degree. And what I mean to a degree is the amount of buyers that are out there. Um, I think you're going to get a lot more sellers. If I'm looking even in the corporate rental space and companies I'm liaising with, a lot of people are renegotiating leases, but people still need to buy and sell property. People will still need, if not more, to rent property right now. Maybe slightly longer, maybe more challenging, price sensitive, uh, you know, re reduction on price, which affects commissions, etc. Here's the biggest thing that I'd be asking you to ask yourselves. And I mentioned this briefly at your, your Sun City conference. People won't stop buying. But the number one thing is, are they going to be buying from you? And I anchored at your conference what we call the sales DNA. So if you picture a triangle at the foundation of the triangle, and all three of these components affect your level of results. The foundation is mindset. It's everything that you've been and are right now feeding your mind with. And it's positive, negative, can, can't, will, won't. I'm going to expand a little bit into that shortly. But the strength of that mindset, your individual mindset, has a massive impact. And uh, you know, I was chatting with a range of leaders and business owners recently, managers, and saying that the number one sport in South Africa, it's not rugby, it's not football, it's not cricket, it's what I call boss watching or manager watching, that there are so many people that are looking to you and you don't see it maybe physically, but looking to see what your mindset is and your drive and your belief here right now and the influence that you've got is massive because the strength of that is driving the activity. What are we spending our day with right now? Working from home, massive challenge. I've got two young daughters, three and a half and five and a half, um, a wife that's doing a lot of homeschooling, uh, I'm doing a lot five, six hours a day on this. So she's a hostage upstairs. And we all have our challenges right now. But the time I'll share a little bit later uh, today here with you is what are we using that time and what should we be focusing on? And then really, only then comes in the skills. When I'm engaging, what do I say? Whether it's on LinkedIn, an email, on the phone. Um, you know, what is the verbiage? What is the empathy? Um, what are the other skills I can do for marketing? But if I relate back to that, Foundation is mindset. The strength of your mindset is driving the activity and what we're focusing and how we're going about it. And the skills are coming as we're doing more of that. So, you know, your level of results depends on those three components. And to share a few ideas, <clears throat> if I arrived at your house right now, and I knocked on your door and you opened it up and snuck me in. But I walked in with several garbage bags full of trash and I just started pouring it all over your rooms. How would that make you feel? And I know that 
if you did that to me, I'd be angry, upset, use the word pissed off. Um, why would I be? Because I'm fairly house proud. I like to have a nice, neat environment. And if you throwing all that trash around, it would upset me greatly. In fact, if I didn't kick you out immediately, I'd make you clean it, or at worst, I'd clean it up myself. I wouldn't leave it for long. Is that fair? So here's the thing. Are you allowing any head trash into your head there right now? What are you choosing to feed your mind with right now? What are you allowing others and other influences to, to level and really grow? Because your mind doesn't care what you plant in. Positive, negative. Um, this is a hell, hell of a challenging time, by the way. And I'm not trying to make light of the situation. But I'm seeing so many people sitting in this negative mindset. Not the Remax people, but at other organizations. And I think I really want to consciously make you be careful in regards to what is trash or what is it that you're allowing to come into your head. Because we've got two simple options. It's as simple as that. Um, either we are fighting with everything that we've got according to our each, each unique individual situation right now. We are not lying down. We are coming out swinging. We are looking at whatever is in our control that we can do. And each day we're treating as a new challenge but an opportunity to really push forward. Or the alternative is we're looking at this as the worst ever time in my entire life. There's nothing that I can do and it sits out of my control. And I'm coming across some people within that. And I've seen, you know, what's had a huge impact is really what are they surrounding themselves with and allowing to feed into that mind? Because that old saying that misery loves company has never been truer. If you're looking on these WhatsApp groups, and I enjoy a joke as, as, as much, if not more, than many people, um, you know, the negativity that's screaming through you, some of it's real, and, and I want to keep this real world here. But that influence, you know, is that moving anyone forward? Is it creating anything that, that's really going to get us out of this or strengthen your position? Minimum business survival. Second part, to ensure that I've got a firm base to really start to drive and use this opportunity as we start to get back to some form of normalcy, normalcy to really drive my business. Um, I don't believe that we're gonna be in lockdown forever. I don't think any of you believe that. We just don't know the next 30, 60, 90 days. But let's look at this. We're not gonna be sitting at home for the rest of our lives. But a big question I've asked a couple of groups recently is, with this negative mindset or feeding of negativity, just make sure that you aren't patient zero, not patient zero COVID-19, but patient zero because our mindset and, and our positivity or negativity <clears throat> is one of the easiest things to also infect others or be infected with. And I'll share a quick story that I've got the most amazing wife, just in case she watches this, um, but she is amazing. And uh, we one of those rare couples, I think that, if we have an argument once every two years, it's a lot. We get on exceptionally well. <clears throat> but we got into a little bit of a heated discussion about a week ago. And the end result, or during this, she was saying to me, but you won't let me vent. And I was saying, but I'm seeing this as negative complaining. And I guess at times that we've each got to look at our own unique situation to try and dissipate to understand what the core difference is on that. But I think the strength of your family unit, your partner unit, those that might be by yourselves, the friends in which you're engaging with, and being able to rely on a great brand like Remax that is driving and assisting, whether it's through the education platforms, ideas through Adrian, Shay and the team, does have a big impact. And I saw a movie actually last night. Um, some of you might have seen it on Netflix. I think it's called Extraction with uh, the one Helmsworth or Hemsworth brother from uh, one of the Avengers movies. And there was a line that a young Indian child uh, spoke in there that I wanted to share with you. I actually wrote it down. And they were going through a hellishly tough time in this movie. And he said to the, 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 the main actor, you don't drown by falling into the river, but you drown by staying submerged in the water. And I, I looked it up. It's a Paolo Coelho quote. And I just think that that's so apt right now is that we don't drown in COVID-19, we drown by what it is we're choosing to do and the mindset of how do we push through this to give it the best opportunity. <clears throat> Keeping it real world, I also know that there are people right now that have a tremendously challenging time. Um, if you were struggling pre-pandemic, then you're sitting in a very, very tough position right now. 
if your cash flow was exceptionally tight prior to this, then we're sitting in a position that business survival might not happen. It's not negative. I really want to keep this real world. But for many of us, there are opportunities to grow and market your business and brand. And even in the property industry, I think, you know, realism, it's going to shrink to a degree. You're going to have less people competing in the marketplace. You've got to make sure that you're the person that people want to reach out to. And again, you know, I was thinking about what I could share today. And I think one of the things that I try and share wherever I can is the chat I had with Jeffrey Gitterman. I shared this at your conference. <clears throat> Jeffrey wrote the fastest selling sales book of all time called The Little Red Book of Selling. And I flew to Charlotte, North Carolina in America to go and interview and have a chat with him. And I said, how do you define mindset and sales mindset? And the first bit he said to me, Mark, at its fundamental positioning and beginning, it's what you're choosing, I shared this, to feed your mind with. And I said to him, Jeffrey, I, I've got a pretty positive attitude, not ego or arrogance. I'm conscious about what I do. I do read. I look around. I'm always looking to feed my mind with positive stuff. And he said, I said to him, but Jeffrey, you know, stuff still happens to me. And he said, you haven't let me finish. And he said, as important as what you feed your mind with, think of right now where you're sitting watching this. As important, if not more important, is how you are choosing to react and respond to what's happening to you throughout each day. Having a positive mindset is not going to stop challenges happening to you today, <clears throat> this afternoon, this evening, tomorrow, next week, next month. But a huge differentiation. differentiation is going to be on the people and how they choose to react and respond to the specific time. And I used to call it the 10% rule. 10% of the time you hear on your front door, you open the door and crap's there. It's a challenge of uh, you know, a, a deal or a sale that was going through and it's pulled out at the last second. It's an OTP that hasn't gone ahead. It's a bond finance that hasn't been approved at the last minute. I'd say disgruntled client through no fault of your own. It could be anything. And I think right now during this last several weeks, that's gone up to probably 70, 80% for many people, if not higher, depends on your situation. But just focus on what it is that you can do within your own personal mindset. And it's not a bit of raw, raw or weak attitude training I'm trying to do here. But one of my all-time favorite mentors, and I've read pretty much and followed everything he's ever done, is a guy called Zig Ziglar. And he passed away several years ago. And many people used to say to Zig, but Zig, this positive thinking, come on, it's a load of nonsense. Positive thinking won't let you do anything. And he said, you're right. Positive thinking won't let you do anything. But it will let you do everything better than you can with negative thinking. And you know, part of the thinking I, I, I've seen out there to share from a sales perspective is everyone's spoken, you've got to go, everything must be online. Everything will be online now going forward. There will be no more face-to-face. -face. <clears throat> My entire business was reliant on face-to-face, face-to-face the largest sales events, trainings um, here into Africa, and we've had to readjust immediately into being able to do this via zoom microsoft teams and many other things you know we're developing online programs right now that we've been forced into doing because you know if we're not doing this our business is not going to generate any revenue. but i do believe we'll get back to face to face at various degrees as we go forward human beings crave contact your show houses the way that you do properties will be different for the foreseeable future i don't know how it's not my area of expertise but what I am saying is don't, don't believe possibly all the hype that everything will only ever be online again. Do you need to have an online presence? Do you need to have a strong online marketing um, strategy and investment? 100%. And I think now's the time to look at that. And I'm hoping you've been using that. But absolutely involve, look around, Google, see the people that are doing it really well. Learn from them. We call this modeling. See a great idea and you don't steal it, you model it. Um, there's also yes to communication now more than ever communicate. I've seen some really effective people that you say, Mark, I just haven't had the time that have spent this time to engage and speak, not via email or LinkedIn, speak that voice to hear a voice with all of their previous clients, even if they hadn't spoken in years, 
all the people that potentially didn't buy from them, they've reached out to. All the people that um, they're in the process with, they've even prospected into people, provided it's something of value. And the conversation is about how are you, your family, and your business or your role doing at this stage. It's not to go to make a sale. I, I really want to emphasize that. Unless there's a requirement or need, and that should come out through that. Um, you know, the other thing I've also seen people start to do, according to network, speaking to people they've got fairly good relationships with to build a referral strategy. And you can Google and find, and I'd, I'd really suggest that self-education, building a referral strategy, you know this, and I believe you've got amazing online training around this, <clears throat> would be one of my all-time biggest recommendations. Um, you know, the market is going to be tighter. We're going to have to work a lot harder. We're going to have to really hustle right now and push forward around anything that we can do to really add value. And it made me also think, you know, what business are we in if we're in sales? And we've got this negative stigma about sales that people have said to me, should we be selling during this time? Isn't it... Um, the wrong thing to do. It's insensitive. And I've got a very simple answer to that. Hell no. It is insensitive pre-pandemic, during and post, if your only intention is to push who you are, what you've got, and they must buy from you. If your true intention is to help others to be better off around their property requirements, buy, sell, rent, on what's most important to them, with value to them, then going anywhere else, then I believe absolutely you've got to reach out and help others. You're in the helping business at its format in sales, but you're also in the asking business. And now more than ever, I believe that we've got to get out and ask and ask and ask. All the money you will ever earn is sitting in the hands of other people. Your business tight, your cash flow is tight, provided people will buy from you if they're getting greater value. You need that money to flow through your business. And we can only do that by asking and asking and, and, and asking. Asking others to engage with us. Asking if they're in the market. Asking what's most important. Now, I'm not going to carry on with that. But the more you ask, the more you're going to get. But you're also going to get more no's. And now's the time to really have a strong foundation that you're also in the no business. You're in the number one rejection business in the world. It's called the sales business. If it was that simple that everyone you asked just said yes, we'd all be multi-billionaires. But top producers ask a lot more than what mediocre or underperforming producers do. And they understand that I have to get this mindset that when I hear no, they're not rejecting me personally. They're rejecting what I've discussed or offered or asked them to see if it's a fit. And what I'm seeing out there at the moment is something potentially more deadly than the coronavirus to businesses. And it's where some entities in sales have slipped into something called the minimum disease, not the corona disease. And it means that they're doing the least possible on a daily basis just to try and get by. The people that are doing the least are never gonna achieve anything through this period. The people that are pushing themselves with maximum output will really push ahead and have the greatest opportunity and strength as the markets start to open up again, you're light years ahead of the competitors that are taking this lightly. And you know, I thought a little bit further, why, what is it that holds people back into this minimum disease, especially when it comes to marketing your business with your voice, not just online? And it's this ongoing fearful perception of the word no. And it amazes me that some people are more scared of what a stranger might say the word no than they are about their personal and their business survival and success right now. <clears throat> because being real, it's also the most unnatural profession to actively go and seek out someone to say no to you on a daily basis. And I had to share this quick story. And I want you to imagine that you watching this and myself have gone out for an amazing dinner at a restaurant that's open and there's no issues. The waiters come to us, taken the main course plates away and said, would you like some dessert? And we both shook our heads and said, no, thank you. And does the waiter then run to the bathroom and cry for the next 15 minutes? They said, no. Or do they simply go into the next thing? Not a problem. Would you like some Irish coffee, a cappuccino? 
anything else. No, fantastic. I'll be over there. I'll be back in 15 months. They understand you are not being rejected. It is the offer that is being rejected. And so strong is your belief system that you believe in the brand that you represent. It's the best brand in, in the property industry, the real estate industry. And I know there'll be another loud yes. You believe in the value of what you offer through Remax. Your offering is worth far more value to your buyer, seller, renter than what the fee or the amount might be on an ongoing basis. You also believe hell, hell of a strong that your core intention is you are the best person to be helping that potential buyer, seller, or renter. Maybe not the most skilled at times, all of us are learning, but you have their best objectives at heart always. And what wraps up this belief system to get out and market and prospect and drive is that you believe people out there looking to buy, sell, and rent are better off dealing through you, your franchise, your agency, Remax your advice and what you're offering is than going anywhere else in the marketplace. That's something that you've got to wear with pride and push for. And how do I really wrap this up? I'm, I'm just giving you a couple of tips and ideas is the other core component I mentioned at the start is activity. How are we using our time? And it's been the most challenging thing for me is working from home amongst everything else. Um, all of us, same amount of time in the day. Top, mediocre, underperformers. And it made me think a little bit more that pre-pandemic, I used to say to a lot of people, finish the sentence, I wish I had more time too. And in a sales context, I'd often hear prospect, market, work on my online presence. Some would say spend time with the family. How are you feeling now? <laughs> um, and the amazing thing is now people have had that time but have we been using that as effectively as we can? You still have time. It's not too late. Jump in, finish this today. Go and Google, research, look out to people. How are the ones that are using this time come up with an end result that's had the biggest impact in the real estate industry for what you can do? I spent 15 minutes looking around. There are so many awesome examples that you can find. But the challenge is the alternative people doing that is the same what most people do on a daily, weekly, and monthly basis, spend more money on buying toilet paper than what they do on educating their own minds about what can make them more successful and business survival right now. Now, I was looking at uh, some people that are spending the time in the day watching Orange is the New Black. Great TV show. I've seen some of it. But during the day, unless you are hustling with cigarettes and booze in the back of your car right now, and planning to maybe go to prison if you're caught. You don't need Orange is the New Black. Um, Breaking Bad, another fantastic show. Unless you're going to be dealing crystal meth, you don't have to go there either. Use the time. But how do we use time effectively? And um, you don't manage time. It's just, it's there. It's, what I've learned is block out some core segments, golden hours, and work on them. And I want to share a quick story that, I went to a pre-primary school in Claremont in Cape Town called Lady Buxton. And it made me think, imagine if the day that I arrived, the principal walked out, I'm four years old, and says, welcome, Mark. This is a school of free choice. You can go with Johnny in the classroom and start to count and learn to spell or go with all of your friends and play in the playground. Where would I go? Where would you have gone? Playground. A year later, two years later, five years later, still the playground. At school, I used to love break more than academics. Why is that? Because I believe human nature is we want the most excitement, fun, and outcome for generally the least amount of effort. So what do they give you on day one of even pre-primary school? And it's something that starts with a T. And someone in Cape Town once said to me, Tuck, I was like, that's a bit awkward. A timetable. It's a timetable that says 8 to 8.30, finger painting, 8.30 to 9, drawing, 9, 9 to 9.30, story time, snack time. And as you run through the years in school, it becomes math, biology, science, and various others. Why do they give that to you? Because as human beings, we don't, I believe, have the discipline to make that work. And they know that if they give it to us, it gives us the best chance to pass through every standard or grade. Highest dropout rate in, in education, first year tertiary, because it's up to the individual now as to where they spend their time. And often if they're not structured and following a calendar, they don't attend 
enough of the lectures. So what I'm really sharing is, depends on what your business is right now. Are you aiming to just pass? Or do you have to aim to go for that distinction, that A right now, with that amount of effort for business survival and growth? And if that's the effort you've got to put in, what are the three most important non-negotiable things that you've got to do every day, regardless of circumstances, that if I focus on that will give me the strongest positioning? And not to be a stuck record, communicate every single person you've ever engaged with in the property industry, I would reach out to right now. Existing, past clients, people that didn't buy, potential prospects and referrals. I would market, market, market with the intention to purely expand my brand with empathy. You cannot push a sale right now and I don't believe you should ever be pushing a sale. The top performers are one where the client feels it was the logical conclusion to sign because their best interests were being served. Reach out to that. I would look at ideas to market and see what the best in the world in your industry are doing online and steal and model ideas, not steal, model ideas around that. And reach out to your, your colleagues, other people that you have respect for. Reach out to your Remax head office. What are the ideas that they're seeing that works and really pushes that stuff forward? So in closing, thank you so much for allowing me to share some simple information. And I hope even one nugget could help you in a small way. Um, that means that I've added some value to today. But there is no magic wand where we sit right now during this COVID-19 crisis, this challenge. Every industry will be affected differently. I think virtually every single industry has been affected negatively. But we will bounce back. We will persevere. We will push forward. And I'd ask each and every one of you to really be driving that from your personal perspective and being part of how we push out of this, not part of why this is not going to happen. Um, myself, yourselves, we're not going to be the perfect fit for every single potential prospect or client. Deals will change. Business will change. But I want you to have the mindset that Cinderella is still out there in your industry. Cinderella being your potential client. Maybe you're going to have to go and try on that shoe on 60, 100, 200 different people to find the Cinderella that the glass slipper fits. But go and hunt those Cinderellas. Go and find them and provide value to them. I want to wish all of you the absolute best. Stay positive. Hustle. Self-educate. Self-educate. Self-educate in this time. Market. Engage. And wear that badge that Remax gave you. I remember that, that amazing badge at your conference now. I love sales. I love sales with Remax. I've still got that. I wear that with pride. I'd ask you all to get out there and make the biggest difference in your market, sales, and the economy. And thanks so much for having me. It's been an absolute honor and a privilege. All the best.